Hey there nerd squad, I'm your host Amanda McKnight. Thanks for clicking on this video where we will be breaking down and explaining the new Avengers Endgame trailer. If you are as excited for the follow up to Infinity War as we are, please give this video a like and remember to smash that subscribe button so you can stay in the know on all Endgame theories and news. Strap in because there is a lot going on in this trailer and I mean a lot. Especially considering it looks like we will be traveling through time with the Avengers in this film. And oh, so many flashbacks. Or are they also part of the time travel? Hmm. The trailer opens on a flashback of Tony in a wreckage after he escapes the cave and his kidnappers in his Mark I Iron Man suit. Wow, that Iron Man suit has come a long way. A lot of the flashbacks we see in this trailer remind us of the humble beginnings of our heroes and really highlight how much they've all grown, which also left me wondering if this will be Marvel's way of allowing us to say farewell to these heroes. Maybe those who have flashbacks in the film will meet their end in Endgame. And Tony isn't the only one who gets these moving flashbacks. Continuing on, we get a little hint of Pepper in Tony's flashbacks, which are accompanied by a voiceover. The voiceover seems to sound like a message from Tony to Pepper, possibly one he recorded and sent back to her after the events of Infinity War, in a hope that she was still alive and it would reach her on Earth. Here's hoping, Tony. We cut to a shot of Tony in the Guardian's ship. Which leads me to believe that he fixed it up after the events on Titan and was able to get off. We then hear Peggy's voice reminding Cap that the world has changed and none of us can go back. This line is something little old lady Peggy Carter says to Steve when he comes to visit her in the Winter Soldier film. These words seem to ring even more true in the context of Endgame's plot and the aftermath of Infinity War. Peggy's voiceover coincides with what looks like a flashback of Cap joining the army before he was a super soldier and a completely separate moment of Hawkeye and his daughter doing some target practice. Okay, so two things about these moments. One, we notice in the flashback sequences, if that is what they are, that they are shot very stylistically. We see these moments play out in black and white as opposed to full color, with little highlights of red here and there. Or in the case of Cap's flashback, the red and blue of the American flag both being highlighted. While some may have theories on what these bits of color mean or represent, I'm more inclined to believe that this was simply a stylistic choice. Symbolically, the red may represent death or loss or war. All of these ideas seem appropriate guesses given when and where we see the colors. And and thing number two, the moment between Hawkeye and his daughter is kind of hard to place. It may happen before, after, or during the events of Infinity War. As you may recall, Hawkeye was not in Infinity War. We haven't gotten much of an explanation as to what he was up to. We only know that the events of Civil War took a toll on Barton and made him retreat back to his family life. But it seems in Endgame, he will be ready to suit up and save the world again. A question remains, will his daughter maybe be joining him? or? be set up to follow in his footsteps? Could she maybe be stepping in as the MCU's Kate Bishop? For those that don't know, Kate Bishop is a member of the Young Avengers in the comics who is the first person to adopt the name Hawkeye after Clint. Moving on, a lot of the scenes from the trailer are hard to organize in terms of the timeline, and I feel like Marvel wanted it that way. They are, after all, famous for trying to tease and psych us out with their film previews. If you don't believe me when I say that this trailer is especially confusing for mapping out a timeline, just Take a look at Black Widow's hair. She sports four, yeah, four completely different hairstyles in this trailer alone. I'm not joking. Either this film takes place over a long period of time, or we are jumping all over the place when it comes to the timeline. Speaking of Black Widow, after the shots of Hawkeye and his daughter, we cut to a scene of Hawkeye and Black Widow. Not sure when this takes place, but it looks like the where is somewhere in Asia. But whatever is going on, it looks like Black Widow and Hawkeye may be doing some major bonding in this film. We get a few cutscenes of the two holding hands and looking into each other's eyes, although I know Marvel is most likely just teasing us as as we have pretty much already established that Clint and Natasha are just BFFs, and both appear to be in committed relationships. I would still happily ship these two in the MCU. I think they are super cute together. We then get a lot of dead people flashbacks, including Peggy's funeral, Thor with Odin on Asgard, and a lot of heroes just straight up turn into dust. 
Ugh, my heart. Back to the world of the living and we see Ant-Man looking at some missing people posters, looking super confused. So it looks like Lang managed to get out of the quantum realm without the help of Hank, Janet or Hope, who all appeared to turn to dust during the post credit scene for Ant-Man and the Wasp. Though we were promised at the end of that film that the Wasp would also return. Cut to the Quinjet, which looks like it is returning to New York, possibly coming back from Wakanda or heading to New York to get to the Avengers HQ. We also get a few glimpses of the red tunnel in this trailer, where we see Ant-Man running from an explosion and later Hawkeye getting ready to shoot some arrows. It looks as though the tunnel may be underground. It did also remind me of the uh, inside of a spaceship, but based on the explosion that we see in the trailer, I'm skeptical if that's a correct assumption. After all this death, we get an inspirational montage with some heroes looking desperate but determined, starting with Rocket and War Machine, a duo I love. We hear Steve say, we will. This is cut in such a way that it makes him look like he is talking to Hawkeye, who we see next. Hawkeye also seems to be sporting a new hairdo in this shot, rocking a kind of faux hawk look, which I don't think I quite like. We then hear Cap say, whatever it takes, echoed by the other heroes' voices, as we cut to hero after hero. Ant-Man, Thor with his new axe, Nebula possibly on Titan's charred runes, charging someone, Hawkeye with his bow drawn, Black Widow shooting nothing but bullseyes at target practice, Cap covered in soot and looking like he is in some major pain as he straps on his shield, Ant-Man again but super tiny launching himself off a pencil amidst some flaming runes, and Iron Man looking intense. We then see all the surviving Avengers together in Avengers HQ, walking in dramatic slow-mo, while all wearing what looks like a version of Hank Pym's quantum suit. Is it possible that they will need to use quantum technology to time travel? After cutting to the title, we get a cute little scene of Thor sizing up Carol Danvers and adorably declaring, I like this one. This has resulted in a lot of internet chatter as to whether or not these two will end up together in the film. While I think that would be super cute, I'm still holding out for that good old comic book romance to cross over to the MCU, and I'm hoping that we might see some on screen sparks between Captain Marvel and War Machine. Wow. That trailer has a lot going on, and surprisingly I feel like Marvel is teasing a lot of romance in this one. Romance, fights, and a lot of the world just trying to cope. Let me know in the comments below what you thought of this trailer, who you're shipping, and what your theories for Endgame are, and if there is anything else in regards to the next Avengers installment that you'd like us to talk about here at Top 10 Nerd. Thank you so much for watching, and if you know anyone else who needs help processing this epically dense and amazing new trailer, please feel free to share this video. For all of us here at Top 10 Nerd, I'm Amanda McKnight reminding you to stay nerdy YouTube.